Okay, uh, so I want to show you how you can use a for loop to count through an array. I already showed you how you could use it um, differently whenever we converted it from a while loop to a for loop, and we did the sort of bumblebee, you know, alternating black and yellow um, list items. But that was just by using numbers to count. This time we actually have an array. Um, the variable is called items, and the array has uh, this, that, and the other strings inside of it. So if we wanted to just use a for loop, just by the way, there are other ways of doing this, um, but we haven't gotten to them yet. So just let's just show you how to do it with a for loop right now. So if I wanted to go down here, all right, and we want to get our basic syntax started, if you remember, we've got our three positions. We have the first position, which is to start a counter. So I'm going to make up a variable. I'll just call it the letter i the variable i equals zero, and I need to put my semicolon. And the reason I'm using i is because it could be integer, it could be um, iteration, it could be anything. A lot of people use the letter i in a variable to set a counter. It's just normal. It's a pretty common thing. Okay, so, uh, but it doesn't mean anything. So if I say i equals zero, the next thing is I need to test a condition, okay? Um, the condition that I'm going to be testing is I need to be able to to see if we've reached the end of the however many items are in the array. And so we have to count through an array. To do this, um, we need to use a function that is called count. So we're going to say uh, that i is, it needs to be, let's just say, less than uh, the count of array. Now you, or excuse me, the count of items. Now you might ask me, well, why does it have to be less than the count of items? Wouldn't we want it to be equal to the count of items? Well, no. And the reason is, I'll get to the reason in just a second. Let me go ahead and put the third position here. The third position is going to be that we have to set the iteration. Okay, so it's going to be i plus plus, right? Okay, so now we have our three items. We have our counter in the first position, setting the counter. Then we have the condition to be tested in the second position. And then the third position, we have the iteration or the increment, I should call it. Okay, so the let's get to this business about the count function. Well, the reason we want it to be less than the count of items is because items, here, let's just put, uh, I'm going to comment this out for just a moment so it doesn't throw an error. And we're going to do a little a little test here. And we're going to say that count, let's just call it, uh, let's make a variable called count equals, oops, and let's just say that it count equals the count of items, okay? Like that. Let's say that. We were going to do that, and then we could also just echo that out as well. So if I put the echo command right in front of it, it'll echo it, okay? So let's do a test and then come over here in my page if I hit refresh, and you see that it gives me the number of three. Well, you, you might look at that and go, yeah, okay, that totally makes sense to me. We have one, two, and three. Well, if you think about it, the thing is is that when we count through arrays, and when arrays are uh, given keys, if you remember properly, then what happens is that, let's do a print R on this array. Oops. Okay, print R on items, and you'll, what you'll remember, hopefully, is that, oh, and then I'm also going to put a break, I'll say echo, and then I'm going to put a break tag here, and concatenate it, so that we don't end up, um, so that we don't end up having them all run together. So, if you hit this, refresh over here, you'll see that our array keys are zero, one and two. Well, the count of the array is three, right? Well, the problem is that if we're going to actually use the number inside of our conditional testing statement, we're actually comparing it to the way that it's going to count through the keys. And so we're actually going to run out. We're going to have zero, one, two, and by the time it gets to three, it's going to be a mismatch number of items that are actually in that array container. So let me just show you really fast. Uh, I'm going to echo this part out up here. 
uh, or excuse me, not echo it out. I'm going to comment it out, and then I'm going to uncomment this, all right, so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So if I say, if I were to say the thing that you might think would be normal, which is um, if I is less than or equal to the count of items, then do something. So we can say inside of it, we can say echo I, or excuse me, echo, we have to say items, and then we have to give it the key of I, because we're counting through the array, all right? And then if we want to be also succinct, we can concatenate that and put a break tag at the end, like that, okay? Let's save that and do a test and see what happens. And you see that it, go, it, it does actually echo out this, that, the other, and then all of a sudden it gives me an error, a notice actually, and, it's, and it tells me that there's an undefined offset, three. Well, it doesn't, it's because it's using that number three in the key position. Well, there isn't a, a, a three key. There's only a zero, one, and a two, right? So that's why we can't say if it's less than or equal to, because it can't be equal to three. It has to just be less than three, okay? The other thing too that we could do is if you wanted to say less than or equal to, you're gonna see a lot of times people will do this where they say, uh, if I is less than or equal to the count of items or whatever the array name is, minus one on the outside of the function. So you've got the count of items and then minus one. Okay, so let's save that and see what happens. That's just fine. Okay, and so if, because if you remember, this is how you access uh, a specific, if you're going to use echo, this is how you would specifically access uh, an individual value for you know for a key is that you would print the array name the the array name with brackets and then the key number inside of it right and so as it iterates through this loop it's saying hey go grab the at the first it'll be the zero key of items all right that's going to grab this and then the next time it iterates through the loop it goes and it grabs the one key from items and that happens to be the word that, and then it keeps on doing this test, and it's saying, okay, okay, it's still working, it's still working, and then it grabs the other. And then finally, the the next time, this w is going to f uh, fail. It's gonna say, oh, th well, this is false. So it'll stop, okay? Because I isn't gonna be um, less than or equal to two anymore because it will have already iterated up on that last on the last uh, time through the loop.